Uh, when I talked about the fact that you cannot isolate the school and improve the school, I think we've got to have a new kind of funding. We've got to fund people who work with families where schools are and deal with those families in those schools. We've got to have churches in those communities that will have after school study halls. We've got to have transportation that's going to pick up the parents on certain days when they've got to be informed. In other words, we've got to have a, a wider structure. You, the, it, because it's the homes, it's the families that, are, that, that contribute to the low uh, performance of the school. Uh, when I came home from, from school, my parents had my meal or my, my mother, as I told you, my mother never worked outside the home. Uh, my dad was a Pullman porter. He was in and out. But when I came home, my mother had the meal on the table. I ate. She had me take out my clothes, my school clothes, get in the clothes that I wasn't going to wear to school. And then after that, then she had me to go to that dining room table and start getting my, uh, my uh, homework. Well, now, you go into many homes now where there's, the, you have these low performance. You discover there ain't no table <laughs> for the child to put, put the books on. Number one, fan, the parents haven't gotten home yet. When they get home, they're both working. In addition to that, uh, uh, it might not be anybody but the mama. And she can't do all of this. She can't handle all of this. Uh, and as a result of that, the child gets further back and further back and further back. And after a while, the child just gets embarrassed in school because he can't read and the rest of them can't read. Others can't read. And he drops out because he's not going to stay there and be embarrassed. So you've got You've got to be deal with that community and the families in that community. And that's why we, when funding the schools, we've got to have funds that are designed to work with the parents of the community. Now, in other words, some of those parents would be able to come in some areas if they had somebody really working with them, trying. Now, teachers will call, send notes, those children don't know where that notes are before they get home. <laughs> they'd, have dropped, they'd have dropped those notes off somewhere. Because in the first place, they know mama ain't coming in now. There's no encouragement of that. So you've got to broaden your area. You've got to get more churches surrounding schools involved. They, these churches could open up their educational buildings and use them for study halls. Many retired teachers would come in and supervise them. You could pay some. Pay a, pay a small amount. The, the, the amount of, uh, of allocation should be increased to the point that you just didn't put it in the church, in the, in the church building, in the school building. You put it in persons. Put it in leadership. Put it in those persons that are going to work with those families. I'm seeing them, brother. I'm seeing, I, I, I just knew when we broke down the barriers to and many of the education that many of our youngsters would just be running to those schools. But you don't run to a school if your mama and papa don't believe in schools. If your mama and papa made it without a school and they think you can make it without a school. They don't recognize the change that has taken place. I just knew those things would happen, that we would, we would just be pushing toward the highest height. But it's not happening like I thought it should. And there are still some elements. Now, many of them are. I mean, you have Colin Powell, for example, his exam, and Ms. Rice. They're, they're examples of people who made it. But for every one of those parents who you see made it, there are hundreds right out here in this community who not only didn't make it, but they even, they're not in a position to even try to make it. And therefore, we've got to look at where we are and see whether or not the opportunities that the community offers are accessible. You need a family where education 
is not debatable. Parents appreciate it, they push it, they do everything they can, and education is the most critical problem we are facing following the civil rights legislation. Education. There are two things working. First, number one, you have a technological age. We are now evaluated from here up. There was a time we could be evaluated from here down. Muscle did things in the past. Now only it does things now. That's where we are. If you don't get anything in your head, you can forget about those muscles unless you put them on display. <laughs> Otherwise, they have little value on the market, in the market. So education is a very critical thing, and, and we are not addressing that as a family issue. We're addressing it as a school issue. And you cannot isolate the school from the family. You can't separate these two. They've got to be involved. You've got to have the whole thing involved. Well, I think, I think you've hit upon one of the major problems because uh, these uh, districts are divisive in a measure. They, they tend to divide people economically. They tend to divide people racially. Uh, and uh, you are right in saying it's going to be, it's going to, it's going to maintain uh, some of the division within our city. Uh, it is probably as difficult to deal with that as it is to deal with metropolitan government. There's always vested interests. Every one of those districts got a vested interest. They got business to people. Edu edu education is, is not the main factor that determines those districts. And that's why you got to hit at the main factor. The main factor is largely economics, position. Uh, there are businesses that would, would fight against uniting in, in some of those, those districts because they are doing business with that district. And they feel if, they, if that district, they lose that district, they're going to lose their account. So you've got a real tough job. It's just uh, now. The advocates of those districts will say you got neighborhood schools, and we have this. You got the authority for the neighborhood schools near everybody. That's that's what you would get from the advocates of of these multiple districts. But it seems to me you could have that as well if you had a central district. But uh, uh, it's a political problem. One of the political problems we have. And it's, it's, I, it's going to be one of the hardest ones to fight. Very difficult. Because people are going to support that system for different reasons. Some people are going to support it because they feel they would diminish, diminish the, uh, the, the quality of the school if they make it citywide, a citywide district. Uh, there are others who feel like uh, uh, some people. Some people will, will lose money. They feel like they lose money that that operates that school if uh, if they centralize it. It's a lot of different reasons, uh, but I do think it has it has a tendency to, to keep us divided. Keep us divided. Now, as it used to be, even. Ethnically, I think at one time it seemed to me when I was growing up, it was more divided than it is now, because you had uh, Mexican schools and you had black schools and you had white schools, and they were built around neighborhoods, but uh, uh, they were still had had more uh, ethnic uh, uh, definition than uh, we have now. I think you have have a more mixture. Even now, because there's been mixed neighborhoods, neighborhoods have mixed. It might be that the only thing that will undermine the multiple districts is uh, is the mixture of neighborhoods. 
that people will learn to live with each other as a result of those mixed neighborhoods and will want to unify some of them. But it's still a very hard problem. It's a very difficult problem. Very di I don't have the answer. Very difficult problem. How are you going to bring about you? I thought it was 17 districts. But it's a number of them. So I don't know. Uh, I don't have all the answers. I don't have all the answers, but I know that right here in San Antonio, we need to have a, a, a militant movement to deal with this, the education of our youngsters. We cannot continue to have low performing schools in our minority and impoverished communities. We can't continue to do that. It's going, we're going to have to pay for that. And the worst thing in the world is to have to deal with an ill-informed group of people that you created or did not allow to develop. <laughs>